Can you imagine your life without the internet now? Silly question, right? The internet has become a part and parcel of our daily life. But there is a part of this world wide web that doesn't fall into our daily browsing for sure. Yes, we are talking about the dark web. And in this video, we will uncover its secrets, the role of Bitcoin, and find out whether visiting it is a good idea or a big mistake. There is a huge chance that you have heard the term dark web somewhere, and you have some knowledge about it. It is the other part of the internet. Most of us think of the dark web as a medium that connects people all around the world with the underworld, or a place on the internet where you can do any kinds of illegal activity without having to worry about anyone finding out about you. But did you have any kind of thirst to know more about these claims? Is the dark web actually the worst place on the internet, or is there something else? Let us have an elaborate look at the dark corner of the internet. What is the dark web exactly? The dark web consists of content that isn't indexed by search engines and that requires certain software or authorization to access. It is the hidden collective of internet sites only accessible by a specialized web browser. It is used for keeping internet activity anonymous and private, which can be helpful in both legal and illegal applications. So, to understand the dark web fully, you have to understand the whole internet system. The internet is a vast network that connects computers all over the world. It is sizable with millions of web pages, databases, and servers all run 24 hours a day. But this huge thing named the internet cannot be roamed freely, and here is where the internet gets categorized. Categorizing Internet The Surface Web The Surface Web is the portion of the World Wide Web that is readily available to the general public and searchable with standard web search engines like Chrome, Mozilla, Opera, etc. But it is really a tiny portion of the whole Internet. If you think about an iceberg, the part that sticks out above the surface of the water is just a fraction of the entire thing, the tip of the iceberg. The Surface Web is just the tip of the Internet iceberg. The Deep Web The lion's share of the web, like an iceberg, lies below the surface. Deep Web refers to anything on the internet that is not indexed by and therefore accessible via a search engine like Google. Deep Web content includes anything behind a paywall or requires signing credentials. The Dark Web The Dark Web is the bottom part of the iceberg that descends into the dark depths of the ocean. It refers to sites that are not indexed, and only accessible via specialized web browsers. The dark web is considered a part of the deep web. To give you a perspective, the collective of websites and data on the surface web make up under 5% of the total internet. And the other 95-96% to of the total internet websites and data is accounted for by the deep and dark web, where the deep web alone shares the 90% of it. The dark web is a very concealed portion of the deep web that few will ever interact with or even see. When you are searching on any search engine like Google, you are roaming around 0.03% of the internet. According to some research, the deep web is 400 to 550 times the size of the surface web. The origin. Though the dark web got into the limelight not so long ago, it comes with quite a history in its bag. Obviously, the same technology that made the internet and the web possible also makes the dark web possible thanks to its architecture and designs. This is why it is fair to pin the start of the dark web to ARPANET. Short for Advanced Research Projects Agency Network, ARPANET began development in the 60s by the United States ARPA. Its intent was to share information over great distances, without the need for phone connections between each computer on a network. Charlie Klein, a student at the University of California, Los Angeles, typed out the first message between computers connected by ARPANET. While ARPANET may not have had a dark web intent, but it wouldn't take long before people started to make use of this technology for things they wanted to keep a secret. The first illegal online transaction using ARPANET in the early 1970s was in fact cannabis. Students at Stanford sold marijuana to students at MIT using ARPANET in a time where personal computers were rare, let alone the internet. 2000 is the year when the concept of the dark web was initiated. In 2000, Freenet was released, a peer-to-peer, -peer decentralized network designed to anonymously share files, browse, and publish free sites. Freenet was the brainchild of software developer Ian Clark, 
which offers anonymous passage into the darkest reaches of the web. Well, you can say that the dark web was launched with Freenet. 2002 was the year that revolutionized the dark web history with the release of Tor, which many of us know as the key to enter the dark web. In that year, researchers at the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory released an early version of Tor, short for the Onion Router. It is a private internet browsing network that conceals the location and IP address of users who download the software. The name comes from how it adds several layers on top of your IP address, just like an onion, so that it becomes untraceable. But Tor forever changed the face of the internet. Through the creators had good intentions, they could not have known the widespread impact that their invention would have on criminal activity. With the release of private browsing networks like Freenet, Tor, collections of dark websites and a subsequent community of followers began to emerge in full force. Bitcoin, dark web game changer. Before cryptocurrency was invented, illegal transactions on the dark web were hard to complete as customers could potentially be located thousands of miles away. And neither party wanted to risk using credit cards or PayPal for transactions because they leave paper trails. Cryptocurrency, a form of digital currency that facilitates transactions anonymously, was the answer to this persisting problem. And what name comes to mind here in cryptocurrency? Bitcoin without any doubt. Silk Road With Tor and Bitcoin, the Silk Road became a one-stop shop for just about every mind-altering substance that exists. Silk Road was also a digital black market platform for hosting money laundering activities and is regarded as the first darknet market was launched in 2011. Ross Albright, the dread pirate Roberts of the internet, founded and operated this dark web market. He envisioned the Silk Road as a means to abolish the use of coercion and aggression amongst mankind. Through a Gawker-affiliated blog, it hits the news. In 2013, the FBI successfully completed a sting and shut down the Silk Road. From 2011 to 2013, the Silk Road hosted 1.2 million transactions between 957,079 users. The FBI shut down the site permanently, seized more than 144,000 bitcoins, which was then valued at $122 million, and now it values more than $6.4 billion. He was eventually sentenced to life in prison over his experimental darknet market. But was that the end of the black market of the internet? Hardly so. With demand, Silk Road lookalikes keep emerging to fulfill them. Isn't there any advantage of the dark web? Well, there is. It helps people to maintain privacy and freely express their views. The dark web has been used to fight back against government censorship, changing the face of the internet as we know it. It is also a way for those whistleblowers to unmask some big agencies. It was the main intent of Tor or Freenet, but some people inevitably abusing that power made it home to drug sales and other illegal content. So dark web isn't a place for fun because there are several incidents of people getting unknown calls after visiting. So what is the future of the dark web? Well, we can't say for sure. It gives us the freedom to facilitate our freedom of speech, but it also can be used with criminal intent. The Tor people are trying to work on the latter one, trying to control it mostly. So should the dark web exist as a medium for expressing ourselves or should the government put a stop to it, which is mostly the case right now? We are leaving the question to you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up to show your support. And for more videos like this, hit that subscribe button.